Greetings, everybody. My name is P Train. I will be demonstrating. Get my hand cam off for right now. Uh, I will be demonstrating tips, tricks, and tech. Um, very excited to do this. Uh, there are a couple of things about a uh, good movement that I'm very passionate about, so uh, I am happy to demonstrate them. Uh, a couple things about the stream that I just want to, to give you all a heads up on. I do have a couple of elements I'll be using to uh, help illustrate a couple of things about the stream. First is my dot. I have a dot that I'll be dragging around the screen to illustrate uh, different things I want to draw attention to. Uh, I am streaming on a Super NT, so I'm not displaying any part of my desktop, so I can't really show a mouse, uh, but this should work. This should work just fine. Um, the other aspect of the stream, here in the bottom right, uh, I have a hand cam. It won't be on all of the time, uh, but there might be some things that I want to show y'all and it might be helpful to see how I uh, manipulate the controller to make it happen. So that is a thing as well. Um, another thing, I do have a handy dandy notebook on my desk. So if you, um, if you have a question and maybe we're not at a point in the stream where I can get to your question, I will absolutely write it down. Um, I'll be doing some overworld stuff to begin with, just talking about general movement. Um, after that, I'll kind of go by dungeon by dungeon and show different things about the dungeons. Uh, so if you ask me maybe a dungeon specific question, I might write it down and address it when we get to that dungeon. Just little stuff like that. So, um, so yeah, with that said, uh, let's get into it. Uh, first thing I do want to share, I will be playing on the practice hack. If you do not have this, if you want to be competitive at Rando, there are very few things I think is absolutely mandatory to be competitive at Rando. Uh, can we lower game audio a little bit? I certainly can. Thank you for the heads up there. Hopefully that's a little bit more appropriate. I can also move my mic closer to my mouth. So hopefully that's good. So yeah, there are very few things I consider to I, I consider to be mandatory to be good at rando. Um, the practice hack is one of those things. You absolutely need to have the practice hack. You absolutely need to, uh, you know, you don't have to be an NMG try hard to, to be good at rando, but there are some things it's just to your benefit to practice. All right, let's get to it. Uh, so the first thing I wanna talk about is just basic movement. When Link moves north or west, well, I'll start with this. Link moves an average of 1.5 pixels. He alternates between two pixels and one pixel. If you are moving north or west, he starts on the two pixel animation. If you're moving south or east, he starts on the one pixel animation, but he alternates two and one. So when we talk about pumping, right? We talk about uh, how effective pumping is, and I'll, uh, where's, uh, we'll go to Eastern. It's a big key damage boost, so we'll go to Big Chest Room 2. Yeah, let's back it up. And I'll give myself boots, because I don't feel like walking this out. Yes. So when we talk about pumping, There we go. We talk about pumping Link. Whenever you're moving west or north, Link starts on the two pixel animation. When you change directions, you change what animation Link is on. So if I'm moving west and I'm pumping, I have a 50% chance to reset Link's movement to a two pixel animation. If I'm double pumping, I, I wanna say what, that's like a 75% chance, it's probably not accurate math, but uh, you have a better chance. And I'll actually cut on the hand, hand cam so you can see what I'm doing here. So when I'm pumping, I, I'm actually using my left hand to pump. So I have my uh, thumb on the west direction and I'm pumping north. Uh, whenever I want to double pump, I'm actually holding this diagonal and then pumping up. And that's how I double pump. So let's see the difference, right? Um, and I guess I should explain some things on the HUD here. Let me get my trusty dot. And I'll cut off the hand cam for a second. All right. So this number up here, we're going to be looking at this number a bit throughout the uh, 
throughout the stream, this number shows how long you took on a screen. Um, and there are a couple of other things that set it off. Like if I pause, you see the number was updated. If I select buffer, that also updates the number. So we're, we'll be paying attention to how much faster we're able to do things. All right, so let's take a look. This is just gonna be plain walking. I'm not doing anything special here. Nine seconds and 10 frames. Nine seconds and 10 frames. So now let's double pump and I'll cut on the hand cam so you can actually see me pump here. This is exciting stuff, right? <laughs> yeah, so we saved a total of 10 frames. If I pump better, maybe we can save more? Yeah, so now we're sub nine seconds. It's not a lot of time, but over the course of a seed, especially one in which you do not get boots, uh, that saves a lot of time. Uh, you can also pump in the air. Uh, a good example of that would be escape. I don't know if this has a good save state for escape. I don't want to do all this. Game state, skip text. So when it comes to, to pumping, uh, pumping really, when it comes to air pumping, we'll say, uh, keep in mind that you're only pumping when you move north or west. In addition to that, you should only be pumping, uh, you should only be pumping if you're moving at less than a 45 degree angle. So for example, like this screen right here, you'll see a lot of runners and left pumping is really tough. For left pumping, again, I'm using two hands here. So you, you pump up against that wall, and then you pump to this bush, and that's where you want to hit it, right? Um, this angle is not quite 45 degrees, right? It's not a true diagonal. If I true diagonal, I'm, I'm way too early to that bush, or to this wall. Uh, if you're moving 45 degrees, the diagonal is just as fast as pumping. You have zero time to gain when you pump. Uh, but if it's less than a 45 degree angle, you almost always want to pump to that direction. So yeah, so that is pumping in a nutshell. Um, now let's talk about door movement. Um, and for this, I will go back to the Eastern Palace Mickey chest. Let me just uh, open this chest real quick. Kill some popos. Um, I'll go ahead and, well, let me give myself boots first, because that's part of the demonstration. Let me give myself spin speed. Did I give myself boots? I'm really bad at spin speed. Okay, there we go. We had spin speed. All right, so... Door movement, entering doors. This is something, and I'll take hand cam off because there's nothing really special going on here. Also take the dot off. There's nothing really special about door movement, but it is something that I see people mess up a lot. Um, and again, we're talking about a small time save, but when you consider all of the doors that are in randomizer, there's a lot of time to be gained here. Um, we mentioned that Link alternates between two pixels and one pixel of movement. Uh, when, you're go when you're entering a door, uh, Link, if you slide into the door, Link is reduced to only one pixel per frame movements. Um, you can easily see that when we do spin speed. You see what's happening to me as I'm trying to slide around this door? When I move cardinally in front of the door, that doesn't happen. But when I slide in front of the door, you can see that there's this little vortex around the door that just kind of sucks you in, right? Um, or it doesn't really suck you in, but it slows you down. So for that reason, you want to enter doors cardinally when you can. So uh, let, typically how you manage that, um, especially when you're unlocking a door, uh, there's a period right when you unlock the door where, well, let me get rid of my Right when you unlock the door where Link stops 
Like, all movement stops. So what you want to do is you want to use that opportunity when the door locks, move towards the door. Let's get a safe state without the door. So yeah, you want to snap to the door when the door unlocks and enter it cardinally. I can't think of a single door that you don't want to enter cardinally. You almost always want to enter doors cardinally. Um, if you're talking about a staircase, uh, for example, we'll go to Gifted with Green East. Um, I tried to think off the top of my head if there was a staircase in a room with a stair where I could arm student speed, but I honestly don't think there is. Correct. You can slide into the door, but once you unlock the door, you want to snap into it. Um, so this door right here, there's no, there's no, kill this guy. You don't slow down going into this door. So staircases, you're actually fine. You can slide into those all day and it doesn't slow you down. Um, and then lastly, uh, like I'll show you kind of an example of, where's the cannonballs? Yeah, we'll do Stalfo's room. That's close enough. Did I not do Stalfo's room? There we go. So I'll show you kind of an example of what this looks like. And this is actually a, uh, if I'm not mistaken, this door sucks you in, right? Yeah, okay, yeah, that door sucks you in. Um, so you'll notice, and you can kind of play with this on your own. Uh, when you get even remotely close to this door, it actually sucks you into it. And some of you may have seen this in the past. Um, the place where I noticed it the most is actually the Hera Beetles. Um, when one of the Beetles drops a pickup, like a fairy, or bombs, or magic, and you really want that pickup, but you can't cancel out of the door, once you enter this door animation, you you can't you can't escape it. It's going to suck you into it. Uh, so typically, how I would um, how I would handle this door, you're coming up to it. You want to hit the switch, and then you just walk up the wall and snap into the door. And that's how I try to enter most of my doors, where I just snap into them cardinally. And it's easier to do if you're on the wall, but uh, you know, at least it is for me. As opposed to doing this, and you might actually be able to see the effect, where Link is kind of slowed down right before the door. It's a very small nuance, but again, when you're talking about the course of a randomizer run, and dear lord at how many doors you're walking through uh it does it actually starts to save time like we went uh what in the eastern palace big key the the bridge over the cannonballs we went from what nine seconds and 10 frames to eight seconds and 57 frames so that right there is like 10 seconds right so you're if you do that six times you've saved an entire second um and there have been runs decided by a second so you have that too all right, now let's talk about dash movement. And uh, shout outs to Espeon, who uh, helped me out with some of these numbers, or who at least crunched the numbers. And I am now stealing and taking credit for their work. Let's talk about movement, dash movement. Uh, this is something I see a lot of people messing up. Uh, boots, just because you can dash does not mean that you should. Uh, there is, there are some nuances when it comes to using boots. So let me uh, remove sprites, right? There we go. So if you're dashing, you dash at an average of four pixels per frame, which is obviously faster than than what you. Oh, I don't have the graph ready. Sorry, man. <laughs> I don't have it ready. Uh, 
But with you dashing four pixels per frame, you can feel free to calculate it out. Um, I know there's a graph floating around the Go Mode podcast uh, Discord that has this plotted on a chart. But if you are dashing less than 4.5 tiles, it is not worth it to dash, of course. So if you're not dashing farther than this, you probably don't need, it's probably faster to walk it out. If you have to ask, I wonder if this is faster to dash, it is probably not. In the time it takes you to figure that out, just walk. Um, some exceptions to this, if there's an enemy in your way and you're going to have to slash a uh, your sword anyways, just go ahead and dash through the enemy. That's like one exception. Like if an enemy is like guarding a door, even if I'm right next to the door, I'll just dash through because you're gonna slash your sword anyways. Uh, how many frames does it take to charge a dash? It takes 29 frames to charge a dash and you dash on the 30th frame. So yeah, there, there are little things. Uh, my pet peeve, and if I see any of you do this, I will DM you and say you're bad. Uh, this house right here. For the love of all that is holy, do not do six dashes in this house. Never ever do six dashes in this house. If you're going to dash at all, do the one dash and then dash back out. Only vertical dashes. Please do not do six dashes in this house. It's bad. Th this right here, there's also something you have to consider when we talk about dashes. Because uh, in the middle, in a, in a minute, I'm going to talk about the hook shot. And if the hook shot can reach, it's almost always faster to hook shot as opposed to dash. One of the main reasons for that, your dash takes 29 frames to charge up, right? That's half a second where you're just sitting there doing nothing. Secondly, you really have to have good cancels on your dash. Like, let's see if I can even get right next to this fence. Nope, I missed it. So that's wasted time. Yep, still wasted time. There's like, what, two pixels in between me and that fence? Uh, that That's almost half a tile. Um, so yeah, not, not only is it a matter of dashing, but it's also a matter of getting an effective dash cancel. And that's one of the reasons why Hookshot even if it's close, almost always is a safer option than uh, hook shotting is almost always a safer option than dash. Are there ways to bonk less often or like obstacle courses to run with the boots? Um, not necessarily, uh, which quick swap kind of, quick swap kind of messed this up, but let me think of a place. Uh, I'll say one of, one of them that I do is probably GT Wizards. Yeah, we'll go with Wizards too. Uh, this is kind of a, this isn't the best example. Of course I miss. Look at how good I am, everybody. Look at how good at this game I am that I can teach you how to play. Um, so this is an example of a pause buffer I use. It's not a great one. But if you have to pause anyways, try to use that to your advantage. So you can try to get those dashes as tight as possible. Um, and especially if you're dashing into an object, uh, actually a better, uh, let's go to Hera. Let's go to the entrance. This is probably one I'm more likely to use. Uh, but again, quick swap kind of destroyed these. But yeah, if I need to check ether tablet, that's a bonk, right? So I have to get book anyways. Let's try to pause buffer that. Oh, well, shoot. I didn't do the, uh, my save state. But you get the idea. So, yeah, pause. Try to use pause buffers to so that way you're not manipulating the D-pad. Uh, for me, that's one thing that I like to do. Uh, it helps me tighten up some of my dashes. But that won't always be a reasonable option for you. So, you just kind of have to fill it out. 
Uh, let's see, anything else about dash movement that I have? Uh, dash turning. Dash turning is one and a very, very, very underrated tech. Um, let's see, where's, let's go to GT. Let's go to start here. So probably the second most obvious use of a dash turn is in Hookshot Cave if you don't have the hookshot. So you, you have 29 frames in which the boots are charging. During that time, you can face Link however you want. So if you need to bonk off of this pot, you can actually enter here to the left, start your dash, and then face upward. Start a dash and then face downward. A lot of times we only think about dash turns in this regard. Or, you know, if you need the GT safety room. But dash turning is actually an incredible time save. Uh, probably one of the biggest examples is the pod overworld screen. Uh, and this is something it will take a little bit of work just to get used to. So right here, I don't want to dash up straight because I'm dashing into here, right? I want to get the maximum movement out of my dash. I want this long straight away. So the best thing to do is to exit here, turn cardinally, start a dash turn, and then look up. Because if you face up and then dash, well, you're walking. I don't want to dash. I mean, I don't want to walk. I want to dash. I want to get the maximum distance out of my dash. So I turn out of here and then do a dash turn. When you're canceling your dash, you might as well face the way you're dashing. That, that's not a big deal. Um, but yeah, dash turns, especially on this screen, are invaluable. Dash turn. Uh, this, you won't be able to see it, but it's a dash turn. Talk to Kiki, which I have to do because this is a practice back. Dash turn. Over here. Dash turn. So yeah, you, you want to, and also you'll notice there are some things that I'm walking out, right? Like whenever I come out here with Kiki, I walk here, dash. All of this is walking. Walking, 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 then we dash, right? Because this right here, it's not long enough to justify, like I see a lot of people dashing like this. It's not long enough to justify the dash. You're wasting time. It would actually be faster to walk it out. Is there a time save between cardinally going to a dash point versus diagonal? Yes. Uh, probably the, the best demonstration of that I could think of would be Hera. We'll just start out outside here because this was where um, somebody demonstrated it to me. I can't remember who. Nuts. I walk, then a dash. That's also a dash turn. Here's another dash turn. So right here, this screen. So what I want to do is I want to dash here, right? That's what I want to do. Notice how I'm diagonaling down to it. That's 513. And this is what I this is typically what I would see somebody do. Also, just in case it needs to be explained, for a quick hop, if you don't have boots, like you notice how you you kind of walk up against the ledge before you jump. If you have the boots, if you hit A when you come up to the ledge, you'll actually quick hop off of it. Um, this does not work facing downward. Um, on some ledges. But that's how you quick hop. Alright, so again, this is nasty. We don't want to do this, but I'm just kind of showing how it works. That's a dead. So, 5 seconds and 12 frames. This is what you ought to do. Walk cardinally and then dash. That's uh, almost 10 frames. Or 6 frames, I guess. And the more egregious your diagonal, the more time you save here. But again, I want to get the maximum value out of that dash. If I'm doing this, I, I just walk. Rather than dash from here, all of this was a walk. And, and that's not that's not good. So we, we diagonal to where we want to dash. 
and, and we go that way. Um, all right. I mentioned dash versus hookshot. Hookshot almost always wins if it can reach. If you need to dash further than the hookshot, or if you need to go farther than the hookshot can reach, you're probably better dashing it out. Uh, but again, you want to have good dash movement. You want to get as far with the dash as you can. Um, there, there is one thing that happens. Uh, I'll talk about pit state and dashing. Uh, this is the only place I, I know that it that I really use it. Dash to Skull Woods. Yeah, this will work. Oh, you would. <laughs> Spirit guy's trying to get me. All right. When you dash next to a pit, uh, you arm what is called pit state. Oh, wow. I'm doing a tutorial, dude. Get out of my way. All right. When you dash next to a pit, you arm pit state. Uh, this allows you to do some weird things. Uh, most notably, it allows you to arm a water walk. Uh, but also, when you cancel a dash, you have to press a direction other than the one you're dash, other than the direction you're dashing, right? With pit state, that's not the case. You can actually cancel your dash in the direction you're walking, which is really helpful here because you want to dash through these bushes, right? So how you do this? Get your dash, cancel my dash, walk up and do a dash turn through the bushes, and hope you don't get a skull. So cancel my dash by pushing the up button. Of course I would hold the up button, but when you get lined up with these bushes, do your dash turn. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm finding all of the skulls in the grass. So yeah, so real time, this is how it would look. Dash turn, dash turn. Well, I'm horrible alignment, but you get the idea. Dash turn, dash turn, dash turn. Yeah, and that that's how you do that screen. Uh, and I actually use that one all the time. That that's probably the most uh, notable example I can think of. It like you'll use that almost every run that you enter Skull Woods with boots. Sometimes multiple times in the same seed. Um, but yeah, dashing near a pit, uh, it will allow you to cancel your dash in the same direction that you're dashing. Um, all right. So now that's how to move. Um, and, and I haven't covered everything. I know there's a lot of other aspects on how to move, but I feel like those are the, those will be the most impactful on average in your rando seeds. Um, so now we'll get into some tricks and tech. Um, before we get into the actual glitches, uh, there are just some, I, I want to kind of establish a vernacular. So when I you when I say certain things, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, the first one, we'll talk about. Uh, actually, we'll just do it here. I want to talk about spin uh, spin setups for bomb jumps. Yeah, the dash turn over the course of a seed is uh it's a game changer if you can do it if you're getting the maximum distance out of your dashes if you're getting the maximum distance out of your dashes and you're using dash turns uh it's really good um so let's talk about uh we'll, we'll discuss quite a few bomb jumps throughout this uh tutorial because that's part of i, I believe that's under the umbrella of what i'm supposed to talk about but let's talk about how to set them up um, one of my favorite ways to set up a bomb jump is using a spin setup. So you'll notice when you get close to a hole, you see how when Link, Link starts doing that little stutter movement? When Link is falling, or when Link is about to fall, he, he cannot, well, he cannot release the sword spin. So what you want to do, if you're trying to set up a bomb jump, using this setup when link starts getting that stutter step release the b button and walk out of the pit and now i am the closest pixel i can be to the hole drop my bomb and the bomb jump is free oh i didn't realize i was at the front that'll be all right don't take us that long to get back save state Uh, 
this is one of the easiest setups to to set up a bomb jump uh bar none um and it is applicable especially when we get to ice palace it makes a lot of the ice palace bomb jumps trivial this is the easiest thing to do uh, in my opinion, there there is no easier setup. You can also, uh, what people do, they'll set a bomb and then dash to the side. Um, I think there's maybe an Espeon. You can feel free to correct me on this. I'm probably wrong. I want to say there's like either a one or two pixel window without the dash turn or without the bonk in which that bomb jump will work. Um, if you do the bonk, I think it, it expands to like six pixels or something like that. I know... It, Short story long, if you bonk, the bomb jump will be easier. There, there's a little bit more room for error. But, uh... But, yeah, either way, the, the spin setup, it's just, there, there's absolutely no guesswork. It's just, it's so simple. Um, if you are in swordless mode, and I see that uh, Malmo mentioned this, so I will demonstrate that as well. Uh, you can use item dashes for this as well. Uh... I promise you can. <laughs> That's, uh, I think you gotta back out, though. Yeah. Item dashes work the same way. And then if you, let's say you're trying to bomb jump in a different direction, you can use your dash turn to position yourself so you can set the bomb wherever you need to, wherever you need it to go. You can item dash without a sword. Uh, however, the, the rules are a bit screwy. Like, for example, the hammer dash. You can dash. I, I'll actually demonstrate it. Let's go to... Uh, let's go Skullwoods. Skullwoods, but outside thieves. So I'll actually... Will this work? If I just, no sword? Okay. Yeah. So now I have no sword. You can still do the item dash. It just won't work but for the purposes of the bomb jump it still works so that's the first technique i want to talk about um the second technique i want to talk about just so again just kind of establishing a, a vocabulary so we can talk to each other uh sword buffers i'll just put myself here this is a bad screen <laughs> i don't know why i did it but whatever Sword buffers are simply you you want to you only want to move for one frame of movement. And keep in mind, a, as you get better at these glitches, you will learn that there are certain pixels you need to be on. And you'll get used to seeing those pixels and you'll realize, oh wait, I'm two pixels too low. I'm three pixels too high. And you'll need to correct that. Keep in mind the the fundamental movements, right? If you sword buffer up for one frame, let me let me fall in all. Where's, where's this bogey? Okay, good. Um, I don't want sword beams. <laughs> if you sword buffer up for one frame, you have moved two pixels up. If you sword buffer down for a frame, you have moved one pixel down. Uh, and same with the the east and west, respectively. But that is something you can do. It is kind of an advanced technique, but I might mention it. And I just, if I say the word sword buffer, I wanted you to know what I was talking about. Uh, to me, pause buffers are a little bit easier. So for me, what I do here is like whenever I pause, I hold the direction I want to move, right? And what I want to do is I want to try to pause immediately. See, so that was one frame up. So I just moved two pixels up. And that's how a pause buffer works. So pause while the menu is coming down. Hold the direction you want to move. So let's say I want to, uh, let's say I want to buffer down. Pause, hold the direct. So right now I'm holding the down direction. I went too far. Uh, I, d I left the menu uh, up for too long. But for me, pause buffer is kind of easy. Select buffers works very similar. And I'll cut on the hand cam so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. Select buffers work very similar. Uh, what I do is I work it with my uh, pinky finger and my pointer, index finger. Because um, again, the, the worst thing about select buffering is that you can possibly save and quit if you hold the down direction. 
and you never want to do that. So if you hold the down direction while the box is populating the text, it won't actually go down. So let's say that I, I want to buffer frames down. What I'm doing is I'm hitting my pinky and then my pointer. And I'm kind of if you're a, if you're a drummer, basically a flam. But uh, yeah, that's that's what I'm doing. So that was way way more than one frame, but. And you can use different fingers if something else is more comfortable for you. But that's kind of how I do it. Um, I, it also ta usually it takes me a very long time to select or pause buffer because I would rather not. In, in most of the situations where I find myself doing a pause buffer, I would much rather not move than move more than one frame of movement. That's my own priority. You may not have the same priority, but uh, it takes me a long time to. Uh, select buffer because I'm typically trying to do frame movements and I really don't want to move more than one frame. So that's how I select buffer. Let's get the hand cam. All right, a couple other things, item dashes. Uh, we talked about this earlier and I guess I'll just go back to uh, Skullwoods to demonstrate this. Let's go outside thieves. Yeah, select buffer is a lot faster in a menu buffer. Um, the only downside is that if you are uh, select buffering downward, you just have to take extra care that you don't save and quit. Uh, which if you're, again, if you're being careful, why do I have the big key on my dungeon item? That's interesting. <laughs> uh, so yeah, item dashes, uh, and I guess I will uh, cut the hand cam back on for this. You hold the dash button and the item button in the same frame. Oh, thanks for the gift subs, John Stu. Not that this is my stream, but I appreciate you supporting the, the community. So yeah, for, for an item dash, you just want to hit the, uh, the item button and the dash button on the same frame. That's all an item dash is. Um, can't really think of a whole lot of uses for an item dash, other than like there's a lot of overworld uses. Like I don't want to make it sound like an item dash is never useful. Um, some people do it in the mummy in the mummy hellway. I don't do this, but some people do. Let's see if I can even get it because I just don't practice this. Yeah, you can do a dash turn with fire rod. So yeah, some people do that. I don't like to do it because to, for me, it's a little bit too much uh, controller gymnastics for that room. Maybe one day when I'm actually good at the game, I'll do that. But uh, I, I don't like doing it currently. Um, probably one of my favorite uses of the item dash is actually in uh, GT. Uh, there's really no quick way to do this, is there? Um, entrance. Let me give myself a... Uh, all things. Forgive me as I uh, navigate through the dungeon. Yeah, when I grow up, when I grow up, I'll be able to show off some of this stuff. Yeah, this is probably one of my favorite item uses in the game. Item dashes. I cannot find a faster strat to get out of this room. A lot of people think this is just swag. Well, let me do it right. This is honestly like just the fastest way I can think of to get out of this room. Samaria so dashes are the best. And this is an actual can't turn too far to the right there. As I continually turn too far to the right. I'm actually a lot better at this, I promise. I, I'm not really repping the strat very well. It is a tough one. Like, it's not free. But, uh, 
to me, that's the fact, like, I kept getting wrecked in this room during, uh, during one of the tournaments. So I just sat down and, like, how can you actually get out of this room fast? And this is the, the fastest strat I have to get to that room. So, um, Death Stranding might make it easier. I've never tried that. I feel like there was a reason why it didn't, though. Because you have to drop the Samaria block anyways. Oh yeah, because it's a it's an item dash. Like the item dash drops the block and kicks it. But yeah, you you have to be careful though. Uh, I try to use I try to use this rail to kind of you see how like you you have a little bit of leeway where if you turn into the rail, you face the direction before you actually move over. Oh, dash turn then item dash. That's, that's not a bad idea. Still feels slow though. It is a lot more consistent. Well, I'm not gonna waste time on this. We'll get <laughs> this is this is outside the scope of the tutorial, and I actually have a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, spin speed. So we talked about. Uh, I'll mention spin speed. Uh, let's go to. Uh, So for spin speed, it, you want to hit the A button one frame after you release a spin. So I'll show you kind of what this looks like. I just drag my thumb across. And I, now I have spin speed. The most common error I have found in my own play when I don't get spin speed is in my haste to hit the A button. I actually don't press it hard enough to activate it. That is my most common error when I miss a spin speed. I'm just so excited that I never actually hit the A button when I flick my phone. That's spin speed. Um, so yeah, so now we're on to the actual tricks and tech. Now we're talking about, uh, not like we haven't been talking about glitches this whole time, but uh, Let's talk about glitches. <laughs> All right, so we'll go to Turok. Ice Rider Overworld. So we'll start off talking about fake flippers and item dashes. I don't actually need that item. <laughs> All right, so for me, the e and I'll show this off because a lot of people know about the dash uh, outward out of here, but a lot of people don't know that you can actually com uh, combo this with flippers. So if you have flippers, well, you have flippers, you can actually just dash off of this ledge and swim off this waterfall. And now you have your water walk armed. And I like doing this specifically if I want to check Hobo. Um, if you, when you have flippers, if you step on shallow water at any point, your water walk is broken. But yeah, you can combo this water walk with flippers, which is really nice. One of my favorite uses of the application, actually. Uh, let's take away my flippers and hopefully the game recognizes that I don't have them. So now I can dash through the uh, the shallow water. Just a little bit of uh, just a little bit of movement here. Uh, yay! I checked waterfall ferry. It had garbage, and now I'm going to Zora. Oh, well, nuts. Uh, let me. Shoot, that's actually really annoying. Uh, this equipment I don't want to. Well, we'll keep them for now. That bonk was actually horrible. That, that wasted so much time. Professional would have created a, a save state there. Equipment, I do not want my flippers. There we go. Yes, bonking makes you lose water walk. Um, 
Wait, uh, bonking makes you lose. Wow, I'm really bad at this. Bonking makes you lose your water walk if it's armed. Um, if you bonk while the water walk is armed but not yet deployed, you're actually still good. So I just want to talk a little bit about movement here with the water walk. Which, if you're dashing to Zora, this is actually like a good dash. You can dash all the way to Zora here. There's something I wanted to mention. So, okay, uh, to answer Josh Bittner's question. I have the flu, right? Yes. All right, so let's go back to Ice Rod Cave and we'll arm the water wall. So the only jump that will break your water walk, if you, let's say you have it armed, it's not yet deployed, but let's say that it's armed. The only, whoops. Oh my gosh. There we go. The only dash that will actually break it is dropping down a flat ledge, like a flat ledge downward. This would break the, well, actually this would, you would have the water wall. Um, but by jumping off the waterfall, you then disarm it. Uh, similar to what happens in Zora's Domain, if you try to jump off the waterfall there without two water walks stored. Um, but here, if you just want to dash off the ledge, this actually doesn't break the water wall. Well, the splash does. But the reason why you can keep it with flippers um, is because you, you actually don't splash there. So explain what I'm doing to arm it. Uh, remember what I talked about earlier about in Skull Woods where when you dash, you can cancel the dash. Like what happens is when you dash next to a pit, you arm pit state. So if you never cancel your dash, you keep spin state. So what you want to do in this case is interrupt the dash. And we do that by exiting. The dash never ends. Pit state is maintained uh, outside of the cave. So right now I'm actually kind of in pit state. Well, I'm not in pit state, but because of the way we exited, I now have water wall card. And I can bonk, I can do, you know, as long as I don't jump down a ledge, like we're good. And once I jump down the ledge, the water walk is now armed. So, and you can do this uh, also by bonking. So, like, let's, uh, let's the fastest way. Actually, let's just go this way, right? Uh, let's go to, let's go visit Hylia Ferry. Now in Water Walk, do you die if you take damage? You do not. Oh my gosh, actual sword fighting in Link of the Past. Um, so you can actually do this here as well. So when I dash next to the pit, you see how like I can cancel it by moving up and down, right? So we're getting the pit state. So then you just interrupt the dash. And now you have water wall. You can also do this in the Lost Woods. Just dash next to the pit, bonk, and you have water wall. Alright, so, um... And also, I suppose I should just talk about the, uh... I feel like most people are familiar with this, but we'll do the, uh, actually I'll show the NMG lineup. That, uh, that might actually be worth value. Um, so most people know about how like the regular, the OG fake flipper glitch works. Um, you jump off the screen one pixel away from the water or one, one pixel away from the transition. And you transition the screen before you have time to drown. 
and now we're in the fake flipper state, right? Uh, one thing that you might not know is that there's actually, let me, uh, let's remove sprites, take away the bushes, because that would be beautiful. We still have bushes. Um, this is actually a really nice lineup that we use in NMG. Some of you might find this valuable, so I'll go ahead and show this off. Um, <laughs> I see you, Espeon. Uh, but yeah, so in NMG, you're often dashing here. You just cancel your dash at some point, dashing up to this bush. You want to get up against the bush. And I'll actually uh, just save state here. Slash, and then as your slash is going, well, I didn't hold the side button, but as your slash is going, hit the diagonal. And you actually, it actually ends up being a perfect lineup. Let me, uh, rely myself up. I feel like I got all, yeah. Well, I feel like it is. Yeah. So that might be a little cons a little bit more consistent for some of you in terms. Well, you gotta hold the sword out. I do. You're not. You, there there is a setup that allows you to uh, let go of the sword there. I can't do it. I think once you get away from the bush, you're good. But I'll, I'll leave that for some of you to figure out. I, I'm not super good at that. So yeah, that's kind of an OG setup that uh, we use in NMG. All right. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I will be the first one uh, commenting on John Snow's comment. Uh, I'm the first one that will show you uh, how mortal people can really be. A lot of people think I'm really good at the game, or maybe they don't, I don't know. But I, I feel like I get a lot of credit that's undeserved uh, in terms of my skill level, because I mess stuff up. Like I always joke that uh, if I could do one vain thing as a council leader, it would be ban spin speed, because I'm awful at it. Um, Alright, so now I kind of want to get into some, some dungeon stuff. Uh, we talked about the fake flipper setup. That's just a matter of getting as close as you can. Um, oh wait, there was something kind of weird I wanted to show you. Um, you will probably never ever use this ever in your life. But uh, let's do it. Let's say Toro Rock, Ice Ride Overworld. Semi related for swimming, is it better to have a rhythm or just mash A? I mash uh, for swimming. Let's see. I'm going with like all three buttons. This is me swimming. That's how I swim. Which is one of the reasons why I hate going from Mini Moldorm to Hobo and then to Ice Rod. Because by the, you know, after like a minute and a half of this, it's the worst. The only thing you want to be careful with, um, especially in the early game. Uh, you know, you just got done with Mini Moldorm, you have bombs equipped. Make sure as you're mashing, if you come up on shallow water, that you don't drop, you know, one or two bombs into into the water. And sword slashing, as Malmo mentions. Um, so, yeah. This is a goofy thing that you will probably never, ever use ever in your life. But I feel like uh, I say this as affectionately as possible. This is some Kern level tech. But it's funny, and it actually does have a use, believe it or not. So I'm going to give myself a fairy in a bottle. Where's my bottle? So down here. Bottle one has a fairy. And I want my bombs. So I'm going to bring myself down to a... Uh, Let me just bring my HP down. That would probably be the smarter thing to do here. Max HP. Let's go down to three. Two and a half. Two. One and a half. One. And now we're ready. So now a bomb will kill me. This is known as the Fairy Revive Water Walk. So what you want to do is get yourself over a hole. And kill yourself. And now you want to move out of the hole. Like, hold any direction you can to get out of the hole. Beep. 
And now we're going to Waterwall. The reason why I'm showing that off is because it actually does have a use. Uh, this allows you to check the... And uh, I have flippers, so it's going to break my water walk. But uh, that is not the same as Death Hole. It is race legal. Um, it allows you to check Waterfall Cave without boots and without the Moon Pearl. And it's actually relatively easy to do, and you'd be surprised how many situations you would be in where, you know, hey, I actually, you'll you, you'll laugh when you think of it. It's like, hey, I could actually do a fairy revive and do Waterfall Cave if I wanted to. If you're trying to avoid Aga, it might not be the worst play in the world. Um, calling it a good play is still quite a stretch, but it may not be the worst play in the world. All right. So now let's talk about like movement, some of the tricks and stuff, dungeon by dungeon. Um, and I'm not gonna, I'm gonna try to do this as fast as possible. We're not gonna talk about every room of every dungeon. Um, I'm gonna try to stay away from NMG tutorial stuff. I actually have a link for a wonderful NMG tutorial that explains all of the standard dungeon movement. It, it explains this stuff way better than I can. They actually have the tutorials purely on NMG movement and it is excellent and I'll be linking it at the end of this um, I'm going to try to talk about the stuff that's very specific to uh, very specific to random uh, so first we'll talk about escape uh, and really I just wanted to talk about a couple of like key dashes you can do uh, let's, where's dark cross is that even room well, yeah here we go this is close enough uh, so I want boots so if you ever find yourself with escape and boots within escape with the boots this chest so I, I should probably explain what a key dash is I don't think I ever explained it um, the way a key dash works there's a certain distance from the door, like if you're dashing, there's a certain distance from a wall in which if you break that threshold, you bonk. The game says, oh, you dashed into a wall, now you bonk. There's also a threshold that says if you get so close to a key door with a key, you unlock the door. So what a key dash is, is when you dash at a distance to where you hit like because the way link alternates his frame movement stuff you you hit the door close enough to unlock it but not cl so close that you bonk against a barrier um, all you need to do to key dash is nudge up against something on that grid or line yourself up with something on the grid so this chest is on the grid so when i open this chest and I do my dash turn, you are perfectly lined up for a key dash. I don't know that we get too focused on the multiples of four because it's not like I count, right? It's not like I'm like one, two, three, four. Um, the probably the most important thing and uh, it is just making sure that you're lined up with something like grid and I'll I'll show a good example of that after I don't want to lose the save states here but uh another opportunity that you have for a key dash is actually in this room so we we kill the key rat you have two things that are on the grid you have this torch and you have this wall So that wall will give you a key dash. This torch will also give you a key dash. If you actually dash to the door. Torch is hard for me because I don't know exactly where I am in the room. That also, I, I turned wrong. It doesn't matter what horizontal pixel, as long as you're lined up with the vertical pixel from the, from the chest. It, it depends, is the answer to that question. Um, it depends on what direction you're dashing. So, uh, wow, well, that's way too early. Still way too early. That's just a hard key dash for me. 
Uh, there was one more thing I wanted to talk about in Escape before I uh, before I leave here, and I'll demonstrate some of these topics. Um, when you're doing Back of Escape, uh, a lot of people with boots will actually dash and open this door. It's actually much faster because you get the long dash to dash through this door and then dash upwards. And maybe even that one. That's safe state. So you open the door, you go in here, you check your you check your chests. You come out of here. I'm walking because again, you could, this might actually well you come so far out of the door. If you started in the door, it might be faster to dash. But because you come so far out, just walk it out. And then dash upwards. That's the faster way to do this sequence with boots. So yeah, so now let me uh, demonstrate some things with key dashes. Where you start your dash isn't as important as lining yourself up with something on the grid. This is a perfect example. It doesn't matter where I start here, as long as I nudge myself with something on the grid. Two things are on the grid. This rail is on the grid. Also, the block in the center of this bridge is on the grid. Doesn't matter where you start vertically relative to the door, as long as you nudge yourself on something that's on the grid. And fire bars give me a hard time here. Uh, that's also apparent uh, coming off of... We'll do switch room. Oh, of course, it's already unlocked. I should have known that. Uh, laser skip. So right here. It doesn't matter where I start relative to this door. This rail is on the grid. So as long as I nudge that rail on my way to the door, I'm good. And again, I'm doing dash turn because I want good movement, right? All these opportunities for dash turns. But as long as you nudge something on the grid before you hit the door, you'll get the key dash. All right, so we talked about uh, escape. Now let's go on to Eastern. There's not really a whole lot to talk about Eastern. Um, oddly enough, most of my time is going to be spent on this first room. Uh, let's go to, uh, let, let me get myself some items. I want a hammer and I want a fire rod. Not a fire rod, I want a hook shot. Alright. So when you're entering this room, the fastest way to do it, if you have the items to do it, well, also, I actually need, a. Uh, Boots. I want boots as well. There are three different ways that you can kind of approach the spot. One of them is the dash. But again, you need really good movement. So that was like 504. Four fifty seven. So yeah, hook shotting is actually objectively faster here. And it doesn't help that you need almost like task level dash dash cancels. Give me one second. It doesn't help that you need almost like task level dash cancels to get to this pod effectively. Um, if you have quick swap, uh, you might actually want to do the hammer dash here. Oh yeah, I've already given myself the hammer. You can actually hammer dash get out the door and hammer dash through it. The only the only reason why I wouldn't do this and the only reason why I, I didn't do it until quick swap, uh, menuing to the hammer and then menuing away from the hammer takes a lot of time. Uh, but now that we have quick swap, you can quick swap to the hammer, do your hammer dash, and then quick swap away from the hammer. Because uh, usually when you're in this dungeon, you would want the hook shot equipped because you want to do the hook shot to the uh, map chest. You might want to do a spin, a hook speed or two in the with, throughout the dungeon, but yeah, 
with a hammer, you have a really quick couple of rooms here. And you can just get through those really easily. Um, one other thing I wanted to talk about. Big chest room one. Actually going to give myself the big key. And I'm going to give myself boots. Okay, so you actually have the opportunity to, to do some spin speeds here. If you're checking this chest and then you're really you're going anywhere. You can actually start your sword spin. Open the chest. And spin speed after out of it. So you can do that there. You can also do that in the big key room. Um, and that's really all I wanted to show in Eastern. Eastern is uh, kind of done to death, but that was a little trick. Uh, you can use spin speeds to get through the room a little quicker. Are you touching on any dark room strats? I plan to. Uh, and right now I am one hour into, I think, my three hour time slot. So I do plan on touching on dark rooms, but that's going to be afterwards. Uh, I'll have a whole section dedicated to dark room strats. Uh, so that's Eastern. For Tower of Hera, uh, Tower of Hera, now that we know the spin speed setup is, uh, or yeah, the spin setup for bomb jumps is kind of trivial. But I did want to touch on Hera Pot. Let's give myself a, a hook shot and a handful of bombs. Or bombs, okay. I said handful and I gave myself literally 30 of them. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to show you how I do Harapot. Uh, Act the Boker mentioned it during uh, commentary, but he said that Harapot is almost like a fingerprint in the community, that everyone has their own little pet setup for Harapot. And he's not wrong. Make sure I... Let me just reset just in case. I can't remember if that uh, Moldorm dropped an item or not. One thing to note. So you see how he dropped a rupee? One thing to note about Harapot, if you, whatever that Moldorm drops, if you grab that rupee in the air, you mess up Harapot. The, you, or you don't really mess up Harapot. You mess up the trajectory in which the bomb blows you up. You can fix it by mirroring or exiting the super tile. All right. And super tile is this big room. You notice how this is the size of four rooms? That's because this is a super tile. Alright, so... Um, spin speed set up, I'm not going to lie. I just kind of wing it. I face here, I nudge myself into this corner, I push to the right, I'm not even trying to do a frame, I just nudge that way, and then I aim for the corner of the pot. That's all I do. It's very important, once you get to this place, once you get to this spot, you want to face right. Walls are very weird. If you are in a barrier that you're not supposed to do, or that you're not supposed to be in, when Link moves, it actually pushes you the opposite way. So you want to move left, so it tries to push you out to the right. And then you act, you just fall down the, the And I, I will warn y'all, I have a... Since a kid, since I've been a kid, I've had a hard time distinguishing left or right. So uh, sometimes you might have to listen to, to what I mean rather than what I say. I'll try to be as accurate as possible. So you want to face left so it pushes you right and then walk into the hole. All right. So now the bomb setup. Now we, we don't have boots. All right. Here's my setup. I like using these pegs. I nudge myself in between these two pegs and swing my sword. 
and you want to get Link's shadow. You see this like thick blue bar right here? This one that I'm walking up and down on? You want to get Link's shadow one pixel into this bar. So right now I'm next to it. Now I have it. My shadow is one pixel over the line. Release your spin. Drop your bomb. And I'm going to nudge myself into the top two pegs. Right here. Now we need to line ourselves up. So now what I'm looking at, I'm going to get my dot here. Get my dot over here. What I'm looking at is my menu, this edge of the menu, relative to the edge of this chest. That's what I'm looking at. Yeah, and to Arusta's point, the wiki does have a bunch of setups. If, if you ask 10 different people how they do Harapot, they have 10 different setups. This is the setup I use, and I'm just going to show you the one I use. Uh, but I do encourage you to check out the wiki. Um, you might find one that works better for you. So now, what I want to do is I want to line up the edge of my menu... This is the lineup I want. The problem is, and I, hopefully I'm telling the truth here. The problem is, uh, this is dependent on subpixels, and subpixels I'm just gonna describe as magic fairy dust. You can't measure it. You can sometimes affect it. You can sometimes set it up, uh, but it's not something you can look at and easily tell. You know your subpixel setup. What that means for this Harapot setup is that you must approach this position from one pixel or from one frame of movement. So I need to go to the left. All right, so now I am one pixel away. I need to move one pixel to the right. And we got it. And now you hook shot, and now you're in the exact same position. Move to the left so that the wall pushes you to the right. And you fall down the hole. So let's do that real time. Nudge myself here. Put my shadow one pixel over this bar. Release my spin. Drop a bomb. Go up here. Start approaching this chest. And we got it. And that's how you do hair up high. It is complicated, but the more you do it, the more you uh, the more you get used to it. Uh, all right, so th then we have the the big chest bomb jump, but now that we know sword buffers, this is really easy, right? So a lot of times with the sword with the, with this bomb jump, I'm coming up from here. I will actually get up against this wall. And start charging my my swordsman. And like so real time, like I open this chest, get my sword, I drop my bomb, and then do my spin setup. And that's how I do that bomb jump. You slide on this wall, drop your bomb, and then do a spin setup. And that's how I do that bomb jump. All right, so now we're actually done with the light roll. We're moving on to pod now. And we're going to the hammer yomp. Uh, if it's any consolation, when I was first learning Rando, this was one of the most elusive magic glitches. I could not understand how someone could do a two-bomb hammer yomp. I had no clue how you could even do it. It just it baffled me. Uh, and now it's very trivial. Uh, so as you practice this, it may feel like overwhelming, but I promise you the, the more you do it, the easier it gets. All right. So I'm just gonna show you what we're, we're doing here. Oh, well, it helps me grab one.
Yeah, so that's the two bomb hammering up, and that's what we're talking about here. Um, for this lineup, I'll show you what I'm looking at. And, and I'll show you why I picked these things that I look at. Uh, so I'm bringing back my handy dandy dot here. You see this white trim that goes up and down this wall? You have to forgive my dot. It snaps to some of the elements on the stream. So sometimes it goes like where I don't want it to go. Uh, but yeah, you have this white trim that goes up and down this wall. That's what I look at. So you'll notice right here uh, to the top left of my dot, there's a little C, the letter C. Uh, this is easy for me because, number one, I'm playing on a Super NT, so I have actual pixels on my screen. Um, also, I'm playing on a computer, a computer monitor. So, um, oh, holding control might prevent it from snapping. Oh, that's wonderful. You're genius. Yes, yeah, so I'm looking for this little C right here. That's what I'm looking for. So now let's talk about this related to movement, right? I am missing the bottom pixel of my C. So I am one pixel too high. The good thing about this is that when Link moves south, he only moves one pixel. So I do a pause buffer. And I equip my bombs. At this point, I'm going to drop two bombs to my right. And I'm going to pick up one of them and yeet it to the bomb door. And now I look at the shadow of the bomb relative to my pause menu right here. You want three lines of bomb shadow. Right now, I have four. So again, pause buffer. And now I have three lines of shadow. And now you just let the bomb blow you up and hit up. So again, pause. I actually got it first time. I see my C down there. So I know this lineup is good. Drop two bombs, pick up one, throw it over, pause. I need three lines of shadow. I only have two. So I need to go up one pixel. Can this also be sub-pixeled? Uh, to my knowledge, no. Uh, however, um, remember we talked about the, the mini Moldorm screwing up your hero pot? The top mini Helmosaur can mess up your hammer yump in the same way. If the top mini Helmosaur drops a pickup and you pick it up midair, it will affect the blowback of this bomb. So right now, going back to this bomb jump, I am one pixel below where I need to be. The problem is, if you remember how Link moves, if I move to the north, I'm actually going to move two pixels. Two potential solutions for this. I can either try to diagonal, because when you diagonal, you only move one pixel. I hate, with a passion, I hate diagonal buffers. So instead, what I'm going to do, I'm going to buffer up, and now, as as I said, I moved two pixels up, and now I'm going to move two pixel, one pixel down. And now I have the appropriate lineup, the bomb blows you across, and you just move up. That's the lineup I use. I am one pixel too high, sword buffer down, or pause buffer down, drop two bombs, pick one up. I'm way too low. All right, so now I only have one pixel of the shadow below my pause menu. So I only need one frame of movement up. Uh, and that didn't work for reasons I can't explain. I don't think I was close enough to the bottom. One pixel too high. Now I'm on the right pixel. I am one pixel too low. I'm going to try to diagonal buffer. Uh, that was horrible. Now I am one pixel too high. I need three lines of the shadow and I only ha I have four. And now we're good. And that is the hammer yump. 
something else I want to talk about is the Bolot side of Pod. So let's go, I guess we go to the entrance here. We'll talk about two things here. We'll talk about the potion camera unlock. And we will talk about uh, mimic clipping. All right, so yeah, we'll just start here. So for the potion camera unlock. Espeon, stop embarrassing me in front of my friends. You're making me look bad. Is it really slow? Where's my inventory? Items. Jeez. Uh, I want a potion. Um, and of course I have full health. I didn't think about this. It's a few frames slower in diagonal pushing. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Alright, so first we'll talk about the PCU. This is potion camera unlock. It is very, very easy. What you need to be doing is moving towards the door and you want to use the bottle while you are walking towards the door. And you don't want to cross the threshold where the camera snaps into place. So we're using the potion as we go to the door, but we're not snapping the camera into its proper orientation. So we drink the potion and we move up towards this wall. And now we have PCU. Uh, the way this works, like this, this right here is a super tile, right? I can see the the left room. I can see the this room. Um, the game loads the super tile. So if we said like, oh, you have to kill all the enemies, well, because the well, shoot, <laughs> take it. Forgot to do a save state because the. Uh, because the whole super tile is loaded, the way the game gets around that is by saying, uh, okay, well, when all of the enemies on the camera are killed, then open the door. So that's what you get. It doesn't matter where you drink it, so long as you are scrolling the camera when you drink it. You just make sure you're scrolling the camera when you drink it. And it is important that the camera is moving. Um, don't uh, don't stop and drink the potion and then go up. You have to blow up the wall first. Uh, I do, just because I don't want to, to risk coming too far to the right. So I just do. Uh, you might even be able to... Uh, first, let me get a safe state. You might even be able to bonk up here, but I just honestly have never tried it. So now let's talk about Mimic Clipping. And I will definitely, uh, I'll show you how I do Mimic Clips. Uh, no, I don't need the dot, I need my hand cam. Uh, this is how I do Mimic Clips. I use the nail of my hand. I tried doing this with my thumb and I got a blister. So I don't recommend using your thumb for this. But the way a Mimic Clip works, the first frame of movement that the mimic does it does not detect collision so what we want to do is we want to use that one frame of movement you actually see it kind of kind of bounce into the wall what we want to do is we want to manipulate that one frame of movement we want to try to lock it in its vertical pixel by moving it into the wall and then moving it up or down uh, and also you can, by doing a neutral grab, like if you don't hold a direction, just grab the wall, you can control the mimic freely. So here's what I do. I use the nail of my index finger and I just flick the D-pad. And it helps if you like kind of brace it against something. Whoops. That's how I mimic 
So real time. That's a mimic. Uh, that's how I do it. You can also the the important thing, and I guess I should break this down a little bit more. The important thing is that one frame after you move him to the left or to the right, you absolutely move him up. That's the important thing. Um, so if you want to do select buffering, I'll try that. It's been forever since I've select buffered this. Oh, well, it's a mimic, so it moves backwards. Yeah, so what I'm doing is you move toward the wall and hit the select button at the same time. And while you're here, you just hit up and the A button. Whoops. Yeah, I messed up because I let go of the A button. But, um, but yeah, it's been forever since I've done a buffered... Mimic clip. So right there, I got to move in one pixel into the, the wall. You hit A to cancel the select buffer and you keep holding A. Move him into the wall. Hold up. Mash A and, and I'm doing this on my pinky so I can use my index for the select. Move him into the wall one more again. And you just keep doing this. But yeah, and the, the important thing, the real, real important thing is that if you move him any distance into the wall, you absolutely need to snap him up or down because if you don't, it's going to push himself out of the wall. So that's why I just, ever since I've learned how to do it, the buffer list, for me, that's just, that's the way to go. And also I'm a habitual nail biter. I'm trying to get a close up of my nail. It's not like I have like fancy manicured nails. Um, not proud of it, but again, I am a habitual nail biter, so it's not like you need a, a pedicure to, to make the, or a manicure to make this work. Um, all right, so now uh, we're in the Swamp Palace, and we're talking about Diver Down. So let's see. Let's go to the uh, Hook Dash, which we're not going to do. Also, I need a, I need a Samaria. Samaria and a handful of bombs. All right, so this is my setup for Diver Down. Uh, people have different setups for this. I'll show you what I do. Um, I'll show you first the Samaria. So what I want to do is I want to be lined up against this wall. When you're about, and this isn't an exact science, when you're, uh, let me actually, I don't need the hand cam for this. When you're about halfway to the staircase, turn around and drop a Samaria block. Jump into the water. And while you're in the air, start holding down right. Let me, let me do this real time. Okay, yeah, so you hold down right, but like right as you get to the wall almost, you, you kind of juke. So you hold down, but for like, like right before you get out of the water, you want to move toward the wall. This is where you want to be. Slash your sword, hold up into the wall, and you're good to go. And what a lot of people will do, I don't do just because I never think about it, but if you actually, you can hold the sword spin, pick up the pot, and then you don't do the, the spin. Oh. 
So yeah, that is how you do it with Samaria. And that also works on left side. It's picking up the pot, is picking up the pot faster, probably. I don't know, I've never timed it. Uh, because you're opening up chests and stuff like that. So, uh, so yeah. Uh, if you're doing a bomb, it's a little bit more specific, but not terribly so. Uh, again, we're looking at pixels. So look at the top of Link's head. You see how the the outline of Link is one pixel below the line of the stairs? Like here, it's lined up perfectly. Link's head is lined up perfectly with the stairs. You want to be one pixel below that. So right there. You can learn the timing to release your charge. So you don't have to do either of these slow things. Okay. Cool. All right, so here. So uh, at this point, you want to get about middle. You, you don't want to be on this side of the staircase. I'm usually at least at somewhere right there. Again, it's not a super exact science. Somewhere near the center of the staircase. You drop your bomb, and then you do the exact same movement that you do with Samaria. Jump in the water. And there we go. That's how you do it with a bomb. And that works on uh, left side swamp as well. And that's Diver Down. Um, that's really all I wanted to talk about in Swamp. Uh, so with Skull Woods, there's really not a whole lot to talk about. Just go through the, the intended order of the dungeons. Uh, we've already talked about the uh, big chest bomb jump. Uh, what else do I want to talk about in Skull Woods? Uh, oh yeah, there was something I did want to talk about. This is something that's applicable in entrance, but you never know. If you're ever in a situation where you're in the back of Skull and you don't feel like backtracking to get the magic, but you still want to do this route, you can actually bomb jump across this hole and do this room with the lamp. Whoops. So that's just a little, so you know, there's really not a whole lot of magic that happens in Skull Woods. Um, Thieves Town. Not a whole lot to talk about in Thieves Town either. Um, I did just want to give some brief tips about the Hellway. Which always has a weird color palette when you load it. Getting the God Pixel. The, the biggest, best thing I ever did when it comes to trying to get the God Pixel, when you enter the room, don't move out of the door. Dash straight from the door. I'm still missing it, but... And it is, it's just something that the more you do, the more you get used to. And also, as you can see, even when you get it, the enemies have to cooperate. Yeah, that was just a little tidbit I wanted to add. Uh, my success rate with the God Pixel went up astronomically when I started dashing flush from the door rather than trying to walk into it. But uh, right now I'm not having a whole lot of luck, and even when I do have the luck, I don't have the energy R the enemy RNG. So, oh well. Uh, also wanted to talk about the jail cell. Prison. Okay, we're back to normal. So you can do a couple of different things here. Uh, let me get a hook shot. Uh, I know, so uh, this is something I've always known, but some people are surprised to learn this. You can actually hook shot to these uh, locks. Uh, 
Is there a reliable damage strat for getting through Hellway without boots? Cape. <laughs> Just cape. That's all I can tell you. That and being careful. Yeah, Hellway, you just have to be careful. You just have to be careful. Burn up. I don't know why I was thinking you still take, like, you still rebound off the, the spikes. I might be wrong about that, though. Um, I've never actually used Burn in the Hellway before. You can also dash through these, but that's a really, really... Like you have to have really good movement to make that worth it. Um, also, you only really need to dash if these guys are going to get in your way. Uh, hookshotting is the fastest way through this. If the guys aren't getting in your way, walking straight through it is your second choice. If they're going to get in your way, dashing is not bad. But you should only dash if you have a reasonable level of confidence that you can do it and not bonk. And also not miss. Like if you cancel your dash too early and you end up doing this, that's no good. But again, you're only dashing if you're going to have to slash your sword anyways. So if it looks like these guys are going to get in your way of walking, then you then you can try the dash. Uh, bonking costs how much time? I don't know the actual time. Like the actual frames. But uh, it's definitely not something you want to do, for sure. Unless you're intentionally trying to do it. Um, that's really all I want to talk about. Thieves Town. Ice Palace. All right. Ice Palace has a lot to talk about. A lot to talk about. Uh, we'll start with entering. Um, yeah, I'm just going to flute just because I'm lazy. I don't like dealing with all that nonsense. <laughs> Okay, so you can actually set a small spooky variable here by just fluting. You don't want the bird to be on screen. Just sound the flute at any point in the light world um, and transition immediately. Doing this allows you to set a variable that allows you to kill this Freezor really early. Just the moment you get in, just light it up. So that's a thing. Um, next, we're going to uh, Icebreaker. Actually, no. First, we'll talk. Well, I'll do Icebreaker just because I'm here. Uh, yeah, it's it's a version of Spooky. Do I have Samaria? I think I do. No, I don't. Okay. So I'm not going to get into the logic of when you should hit the switch, when you should not hit the switch. What's going on? I was clipped into the pot. Okay. Fine. So this is Icebreaker. First thing I want to do is I want to make sure I'm flush with the door. And you just want to walk up against this, right? You want to sword buffer one pixel or one frame towards the door. One frame towards the door. Now, you want to do a sword buffer. Just swing your sword. And by the time that sword slash finishes, you want to be holding down right. You see how, even though, like, if you look at the HUD, I'm holding down right, but I'm not moving anywhere. You want to set a block down and uh, let go of the D-pad. Now you want to sword buffer one more time toward the door. 
and push down. And that is how you ice break. And I completely forgot to do save state again. The only time I would not hit the switch is if there's a really good chance I am full clearing Ice Palace. Because in that, and you must have Kane of Samaria. You must have Kane of Samaria, and you are at what you're, you're going to have if you're Ice Breaking anyways. Uh, you must have Kane of Samaria, and uh, you must be full clearing Ice. Oh, I don't have uh, Kane anymore. Actually, no, before I do this, <laughs> save state. That's Icebreaker. One pixel to the door, slash and diagonal right out, drop a block and let go of the D-pad, slash once toward the door, and then just hold the down button. It looks like a lot. But unlike Hammer Yump, you're not up against a timer. Or the Ice Palace Bomb Jump, you're not up against a timer. So you can kind of take your time and do each step. Yeah, that is how you Ice Break. Now we're getting into the Ice Palace Bomb Jump. Uh, and I will show you how I do the Ice Palace Bomb Jump. I do the NMG strap, so it looks a lot tougher than it is. Um, and I don't know, it may actually be tough. I've been doing it for a while, so it doesn't feel hard to me. Um, and I remember learning it. It wasn't something that took me a super long time to pick up. Can we talk about the one frame for a second? What is the one frame? I don't know that I'm familiar with that. The left input is one frame. Which one? The first one or the second one? The one pixel to the door. Yeah, all of the all of my movements to the left are one frame. One frame of movement. Okay, yeah, so uh, both movements to the left need to be one frame. Kind of see some issues there where my left movement wasn't a frame, so uh, I just kind of pushed the block off into oblivion. <laughs> you struggle with getting one frame movements on the controller. Any advice on that? Um, to be honest, I'm not super good at the reset strats. Was it you throw? Line yourself up with the door. Yeah, that worked. So yeah, uh, if you need to reset, what I do is I throw it just to line up with the door pick it up again, and then you do basically all the movements as the Samaria block is up in the air. Alright, so I'm going to move on to the Ice Palace bomb jump now.
All right, so I'll show you the strat that I did to, to learn, the, or the, the strat that I use right now. Um, then I'll kind of show you how to do it with uh, spin setups as well. So I use dash turns. There are two pixels that I am looking for. So this is one of them, or there, there are two vertical lineups that I look for. This is one of them. But in particular, I'm looking right here on Link's shadow for any light pixels. Right now, there are no light pixels. I'm gonna try sword buffering once. Now there's one light pixel below Link Shadow. Both of these work. So zero pixels and one light pixel. That's what I'm looking for. That's good. That's good too. Once you do that, you drop the bomb. Whoops. That's way too far to the right. That's like, what, three light pixels and a gray pixel? Still too far. That's good. Drop the bomb. And here, there's no way to pause. But th this lineup will work. So I'll just do this. This is a lineup that works. I have one light pixel below Link Shadow. The second lineup, after dropping the bomb, look at the top of Link's outline compared to this thick, dark bar below the door. That's what I look at for my vertical lineup here. How Link's hat lines up with this bar. So real time, get my turn, get my hat lined up, and at this point you can menu to the hammer and do a hammer dash. Way too far to the right there. Way, way, way too far to the right there. We're good there. Got my vertical line up, and that's Ice Palace Bomb Jump. That's the lineup that I use. Um, you can also do the same thing with spin setups. It's a bit slower. You can still do it. So if I'm doing that, what I do is I, I just hold right out the door. Once you get out of the door, I, I hold left out of the door. Once you get out of the door, you hold right, get a spin, do your spin setup, drop the bomb, and then it's the same vertical line up. And you can still do the hammer dash. But sometimes you'll get hit by the fire bar if it's not timed right, so. I like the dash turn just because it's fast. But yeah. That is the Ice Palace Bomb Jump. Those are the setups that I use. One pixel between the sword and the bottom of the bomb statue. The only pro the reason why I used to do that same lineup. The reason why I stopped doing that is because I wouldn't have consistent swords in the room. And uh, I couldn't be bothered to learn both of them. So I would just rather learn this. Yeah, that was a bad setup. I just preferred to learn this and go with that. Yeah, the the Ice Palace, the Ice Palace bomb jump kind of suffers for from almost a wealth of knowledge about it. Like even with Harapot, Harapot's the same way, right? Har there are a billion different setups to use for Harapot. You really only need to find the setup that works for you, and once you find that setup, you're good to go. And this is kind of the the same. Um, so all right, we we do have a couple of other bomb jumps to discuss in the dungeon. Uh, Resets. Bombable floor? Oh no, not this. 
Rolling Bumble before. Uh, yeah, I guess Penguin lineups. We're practically there anyways. Alright, so if you don't have a hookshot or a cane and you're trying to... Let me just... There we go. It's safe state here. A lot of this stuff is trivial with the spin setup. I guess we'll do a safe state here. Let me also get rid of the sprites. Alright. So if you need to do a bomb jump in this room... Get yourself perfectly lined up with this block, and then you want to move down and do a spin setup. That's it. Surely this will work, right? Yeah, didn't think so. <laughs> What conditions do you need to do a bomb jump here? I mean, kill the enemies and then, uh... I mean, really, it's, it's not like you have to do this bomb jump or you don't have to do the bomb jump. All I'm talking about is that if your route has you in this room and you don't have a hookshot, this is how you bomb jump the room. So, typically for me, that means I come in here and I don't have a cane and I also don't have a... Hookshot. What would you need to redo this? Uh, you would never redo this. Whoops. Not that I know of, if I'm understanding your question correctly. You would only ever bomb jump this way, because you can't open that door back up. Um, and then last... The other bomb jump is the freeze order room. We'll go back to the penguin switch room, I guess. No, not the penguin switch room. Penguin lineup room. I hate this room. Alright, so this room right here, the, the bomb jump across this pit isn't an exact science. I just put my shadow like over this corner and it works. Usually. Just put your shadow over that corner and it blows you across. Uh, to bomb jump back, it is actually free. You just tuck yourself into... You get a spin charging. You tuck yourself into this corner. Drop your bomb. And those are the bomb jumps in that room. You might be able to do a spin setup just off the top of this. I don't think it works, though. Okay, it does, yeah. So just line yourself up with this, do a spin set up, and then drop a bomb. That works too. So now we're on to Misery Mire. So for Misery Mire, I, I do want to talk about Spooky. That's the, the primary lesson of... Let's go to Outside Swamp. <laughs> that was for science. I didn't know if that would work. It felt like it should. Like when you do enough bomb jumps, you just see things that just make sense. So first, let's talk about setting up Spooky. Whoops. I was, I 
Number one, flew to the right location. So we're fluting to six. We're getting below this rock. Spooky is now armed. The moment the bird left the screen, Spooky was armed. What Spooky is, the splash damage from the fire rod shares a variable with the height that the bird leaves the screen. So by getting under this rock, the bird leaves the screen at a specific pixel, and that is how we arm Spooky. So as long as I don't create any objects, and by create an object, I mean um, drop a drop a bomb. I think bombs break it, uh, but for sure lamp and powder. Those are the uh, the biggest offenders. Uh, if you use your lamp, you will overwrite the spooky variable, and if you use uh, powder, bombs do not. Okay, if you use powder and lamp, for sure. You will overwrite the spooky variable. Uh, if you absolutely must use powder, you might be able to get away with doing a dash buffer, like before you before you drop the powder. But um, but yeah, that's kind of a that that's a bit advanced. Uh, so then, how you actually now now we've set spooky. I I need to go back further than this to really talk about it. Uh, basement. Oh, Lucien, you're in for a treat. Spooky's fun. So first part is spooky. When you lay down this Samaria block, you want to kick up dust as you lay the Samaria block down. Oh, this is perfect time to talk about this. So I accidentally set it too far to the right. So there's a good chance that when I dash over this block, I'm actually going to yeet it toward the door. Uh, watch this. If, assuming I even trigger it. Oh no, it's actually good. So let me let me try because I do want to I do want to show this off. I learned this just recently, actually. Oh well. Helps me actually get the uh, smarter block out. Yes, yeah, so this is a perfect example. I'm gonna hit that block so hard when I try to dash around it. If you're fast and you don't get hit by a fireball, I'm gonna try to do this real time. It's hard to mess up something real time though. Dang it. I did not know boomerang breaks spooky. That is actually knowledge to me. Dang it, I keep messing up. I swear I do this like all the time whenever I'm actually playing. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Oh dang, I keep getting hit by the fireball. What I mean to say is that if you mess up and you actually then if you mess up and you accidentally like dash through the block Yeah, it's really hard to demonstrate. If you mess up and you accidentally dash into the block, you can actually save it if you dash really quickly. I just can't do this wrong. I just need to suck it up and get myself fire shield <laughs> so I can properly demonstrate this. Uh, I ref my pride will not let me. Yeah, I just keep... You you'll notice, like, there's a... You're 99% sure you can just hold down. There we go. Yeah. So if you uh, if you accidentally kick the block, you can actually save it. So here you want to get in this little third lane right here, the next to last lane. Uh, and for Spooky, because we kicked up the dust when we dropped the Samaria block, that Spooky variable is still preserved. And again, that the the height that the bird left the screen on, that variable is shared with the splash damage from our fire rod. So what we're about to do is we're about to hit this spike and the splash damage from that fire rod shot is going to hit the switch above. And then here, you can actually just walk into the anti-fairies and just shoot an anti-fairy. 
If you want to get real fancy with it, you can do dash strats. But it's something you definitely want to practice before you do real time. You slash. Well. Unless it's something my tournament match today, too. Yeah, I was too high. There's a lot of things that can go wrong with this. It's not hard. But it is uh, kind of precise. And then lastly, shoot that side of the torch. And that's your last spooky. So that is Spooky Glitch throughout Mire. Um, also, I'll be linking an NMG tutorial that kind of goes over that movement as well. Uh, so they'll they'll show that off during that time too. Uh, Espeon, I think I'm going to leave Door State Extension to you because I am running kind of long. Uh, and I, I still have dark, uh, dark rooms to get to. <laughs> um, what, for Turtle Rock, the only thing I wanted to talk about was portal preservation. And there's really not a whole lot to demonstrate. Uh, if you want to preserve a portal, um, there, there is a caveat to this. Uh, this is easier to, uh, it's easier to preserve a portal if you have not killed Aga. But if you're in Turtle Rock, you can, well, actually, I could just go to Laser Bridge and show it off there. Laser skip. So yeah, so you're here, you tried to dive Turtle Rock looking for the ice ride, you did not find the ice ride, and you want to go look. Um, assuming Aga is not dead, um, you can save this portal. How you would do that is you go do whatever you want to do. Um, the important thing is that you never ever mirror from the dark world. Once you mirror from the dark world, your new portal overwrites this one. So long as this portal is on the map, if you go into the dark world, if you die, I'm going to die here. And I'll show off. So you can see my portal on the map right here. Actually, I can go to the dark, dark world and show this off. Let me uh, take a few more hits. Go into the dark world. Kill myself with a bomb. Well, of course, I have Japanese now, so you can't see what I'm doing. But um, you would want th this middle option should be continue. Oh, it's not. It was save and quit. All right. Well, in rando, that that will be English, and you can read it. But um, what you would want to do is actually. Oh, I couldn't do it here anyways because Agat's dead. Um, but yeah, rather than hitting save and continue, you just want to hit continue. And in doing that, it will preserve your portal on the overworld. So you can make one trip into the dark world, but you cannot leave the dark world. Once you've done what you want to do, you have to kill yourself and then hit continue. And then you will be presented with the, uh, um, with the light world options. Does save and continue actually work? I didn't think save and continue worked. You can technically still save the portal if you're, um... Not really, like... Oh, save and continue does work. I learned something today. But, um... Saving the portal in the with Aga dead doesn't really work, um, because you can't go into the dark world, and at that point you're just kind of checking light world checks anyways. 
So there's no, you know, you're probably fluting back to Turtle Rock or whatever anyways. Okay, and then, um... Turtle Rock, I'm at, I mean, Ganon's Tower I'm not actually talking about because uh, that is Sailor Nep's uh, portion of the tutorial. So now the last section I have is for Dark Rooms. And I'll show you how I go about Dark Rooms. Let's go to Hera. Let's say we're outside Desert Palace, but let's give ourselves equipment. Give ourselves flute. Myself a flute. Let's flute to one. All right. Uh, so let me. One thing I love about the practice hack is you can actually turn the light on. Lit room just. I think you actually have to do it here. There we go. Alright, so really the most important thing when you're doing dark rooms is that you just know what obstacles are in your way. And you kind of aim for those obstacles. So here, I know there's a wall in front of my face. And I know I need to hug that wall. I know that there's this little nudge right here, this little nook. So anytime I'm going through this dark room, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> Once I go past, I give, I give myself a little bit of time after hitting this little bump. And then I move into this wall and I know the doors right here. Of course, he has text now. I'm not going to walk him back out because I'm going to have to talk to him. I guess I probably should, though. I probably should walk him out. So walking him out is really easy. You just hold down right out of this door. And eventually, you're going to get stuck on this wall. Then you just start moving to the left. Or to the right, sorry. You'll start poking this, or even before that. Once you once you start going flat here, just hold down right. At that point, you're just going out of the cave. So really easy. So now let me uh let me take away my lamp, <laughs> and we'll actually show how this looks. Where's the lamp? Oh, it's a lantern. Yeah. So I know I have this wall in front of me. So I go around it. I'm holding up left. Now I know that I'm in this hallway. So I'll hold down to get myself up against this wall. Then I'm going to hold down left. And I'm looking for this little bump. There it is. You see this little flat area? It's kind of hard to tell, honestly. Excuse me, one second. But yeah, there's this little bump in the wall. So once you pass that bump, you give yourselves a little bit more room to clear the pit. Move up against the wall to your left. Move up and to the left. And now I'm in the hallway that the old man is in. He's going to talk to me. Oh, whoops. This is going to be awkward. Yeah. I've already explained how to get out. So getting out is easy. Like If you can get to the man, that's the hard part. Um, let's do it from the front, too. Presets. Man, that's a, that's a rough save state there. Um, let's go back to... Uh, no, not here. Let's go to... Let's do Hera. Yeah, we're outside Hera. Let's give ourselves a flute. Okay. 
So from the front, we got a little bit of walking to do. It's not. Maybe it was easy to do just the fake flipper. Okay, so let's, uh, game state, light up the rooms, link state, no, game play, light the rooms up, damn it. <laughs> DMA preset in all dungeons. All right, uh, so this actually is, a, again, like, the part of the, just doing the dark room is just learning the nooks and crannies. If you're looking at a map of this, it's really easy to do. So you enter here in the dark, you jump off the ledge, you're holding up right until you clear this corner. Then you're holding down left until you hit this flat wall. Then you just hold right. And once you hit here, you go up right through the door. surprise oh yeah because we're after hair right now so um so yeah that's the uh that's the thing you jump off the ledge upright down right once you're on this flat wall right here right and then you just go up and it really is one of the easiest dark rooms in the game uh Going through the game, the EP dark rooms, those are a little bit more difficult to talk about. Big chest room one. I don't have boots, so I want boots. All right, take away my lamp. Alright, so I like to have sword out when I go into these rooms. Oh, I still got red rooms on. I gotta take that off. Um, whoops. You know what, let's just go with it. <laughs> be okay. Alright, so you're going to come down here and poke the uh, Popo, hopefully. I missed him, apparently. This is so trippy. What if I just reload the uh, reset? There we go. Uh, I still want my boots, though. I'm going to route these like I don't have boots. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go down right because I want to poke this popo. You know, I'll do it with a lamp. Lamp's okay. And then I just juke up into this door. When I'm in the dark here, I use these pots for reference. And I kind of walk back out. And usually I have my sword out, so I don't have to worry about style flips. Here, slash my sword again. Go through that guy. Then go through the door. And that's how I do the dark room. So I'll do it in the dark now. Sword out. And I kind of hang the left side of this wall. Because I do want to get that popo. So now I'm in the style flips room. Throw a pot. Throw a pot. Yeah, hit by something. Alright, so now I'm caught. I'm actually caught on this pot. Got my key. I'm getting bullied a little bit, but that's fine. 
down left, out the door, poke him. And once I poke him, I just walk out of the room because it's just a big square. You can't get lost. The back EP dark rooms are a little bit more difficult. A little bit more difficult. Let me get rid of my lantern. I actually, I want lit rooms. Oh my gosh, this stuff. <laughs> Alright, we'll, we'll try this. Um, gameplay... We'll, we'll just go with this. Oh, and I don't even get the lit room. That's funny. Don't even get the lit room. You have the lit room now? Sweet. Okay, so these popos are what make this difficult. So what I like to do... And you, you kind of have to watch your sword beam. The moment I get out of the door frame, I just try to shoot arrows. And usually you'll miss that guy. That's fine. I come up. I aggro this guy. Get the key. Try to let a spin off somewhere around there. And then exit the door. So that's how I handle it. Um, let me go ahead and turn off my game state. Or my gameplay. I don't want them. But now I load the preset, and I think I'm back to normal. Get to a greenies. Yes. Okay, I don't want the lamp. So I'll try this real time, and I gotta turn my game volume up because it's kind of hard to hear where these enemies are. Alright, got my sword out. And I missed the third one, but that's fine. Now I use my, I kind of back up, I split the difference between, I shot my first arrows, second arrow, third arrow. So I kind of go in between where I shot those arrows and aim for the Igor. Where's the, where's the door? Right here. Right here. Let me get myself more arrows. Yeah, there it is. Aggro him. Grab the key. Release my spin somewhere around the Igor. So I I want to knock that Igor as far away from me as I can. And that's how I do the dark room. Keep forgetting the uh So yeah, one more time. Equipment, items, take away the lamp. Split the difference and go back and look for the Igor. There's the Igor. Make it mad. Give him a key. Also, it's a... Uh, one thing, that, one thing I do want to talk about, you have to watch out for this pot. You have to watch out for this pot. If you're... Leave me alone. If you're up here against this wall, you actually can't lift the pot. So if you find yourself up here and you, like, you know you're somewhere up here and you're not able to pick the pot up, come down a little bit. And between this pot and this Igor, that's like what makes the room difficult. But uh, the more you practice it, the better you get. Um, next would be the, oh man, pod dark rooms. So uh, I'm really only talking about the maze. And I won't, I won't really demonstrate it in the dark, but I will show you in the light world what I do. Uh, presets. Palace of Darkness, we'll just go to Hammer Yelp. 
Except I'm not doing the hammer yet. Yeah, you do need to be facing that door to, to unlock it. That's a good point. Okay, and then I want lit rooms again. Oh, we're ready for it. All right, so this, this dark maze, it's not that bad. Um, provided you don't take a ton of damage. If you start getting bullied, it does become very difficult. But beyond that, it's really not that hard. So you enter the maze. All right, now I'm actually going to clear the sprites. This dark maze is deceptively difficult, or deceptively easy, provided the Kadangos don't get in your way. First thing you want to do is hold upright. I'm sorry, up left. Once you get stuck, you want to hold down left. Once you get stuck, you want to hold up left. Once you get stuck, Hold down left, and now you're on this wall. Go up and get your chest. I'll show that again. Save. You want to hold up left. Down left. Up left. Down left. And once you hit this wall, that's where your chest is. Then you want to go down. Hold down right. Hold down left. Hold upright. And this this is where things get a little tricky. You should have a Kadango patrolling somewhere in here. So you should have a good idea of where this is. But once you get into this corner, you basically can just do a loop-de-loop. -loop. I need to get that to get to that chest. Go up, right, up, and you're here. And again, that's just something that takes practice. But uh, this room is really not that bad as long as you just kind of know where things are. Which unfortunately is just kind of a lot of the dark rooms. Like I can show you how to do it, but where where. Anyone can do a dark room with no enemies in it. When you're also fighting and defending yourself against enemies, that's when things get difficult. Um, I had I'll t I'll go over turtles. I will do the turtles and kind of show how I do them. Uh, Cause I do I actually have a specific strategy for the turtles. Um, I am getting pushed on time here though, so I'm not gonna bother with the dark rooms going up to the turtles. But they're also not super difficult. So... I can't use a hammer in the doorway. Okay, so I'm gonna assume like NMG strats, right? So first I'll do the NMG strat, or at least try to. That's the NMG strat. All right, so now, Hopefully, if I take away my lantern, when I transition, it'll get rid of my... We'll see. Nope. Okay. Uh, back it up a little bit. Basement. Alright, now I'll get rid of my... I'll give myself fire rod. Take away my lantern, and we're good. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Alright, let's take away lit rooms. Okay, so what I try to do, and this is, I'm not just being like 
a show off. I, I legitimately tried to do the NMG strat. So I'll try to do that right now. Uh, dang it. So I actually, I, I need to go back because I, I wanted to get a safe state. I forgot to get my safe state. Let's go back to the uh, basement. So I try, I legitimately, oops. I legitimately try to do the uh, NMG strat. It rarely works. Uh, I will say that up front. It rarely works, but I think it's a good starting point. Now we have a safe state. All right, so energy strap. So that's my darkroom strap. I try to do the NMG strap. If it doesn't work, you're usually right above this torch anyways. So you just, you just light the torch. And if you're lucky, you get the NMG strap. I'm legitimately embarrassed that I missed the turtle on the left. <laughs> That's the easiest part. So, the two turtles on the bottom are still left. Yeah. If you don't feel comfortable with that, just hold your sword out going into this room. The moment you nudge on this angle, like you see that little, let me, I heard turtles. This little angle right here, the moment you see Link start to slide down that angle, shoot a fire rod shot. That's the easy way to do this room. Um, and honestly, I think I'm about at time. So I had planned on discussing a few other, like I had planned on going into the, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> I had planned on going into the Meyer dark rooms and maybe even Aga dark rooms, but uh, honestly, those are advanced dark rooms anyways. So they might be out of the scope of what we need to go over here anyways. Um, and I'd also mentioned talking about hovering, but to be honest, literally everything else I have talked about is more important than hovering. The fairy revive water walk is more important than hovering. So, um, with that, I think I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Um, a couple of shout outs. Uh, first off, thank you, Super Malmo World and Espeon for, uh, keeping me honest in chat and fielding a lot of the questions. Um, not that you were the only ones, but I just saw you uh, often doing it. So uh, really appreciate it. Shout outs to Espeon, who's going to uh, cover some of, some of the gaps that I left here. Um, also, very special shout out to uh, Lumaga was the one that invited me. Uh, but Lumaga, Lady Box Thief, uh, being very patient with all my questions regarding what to do here. Um, Amarith for setting up the... Uh, the stream tech that was uh, really nifty. I'd never done anything like that before. And uh, Temp Herfy for the community. Um, shout outs to Axial, uh, commentator or host emeritus, and uh, Dante who is now carrying Axial's torch. Uh, thank you for the community. I think y'all you have a wonderful community here. Uh, I recommend this community often to people. But um, thank you very much for listening to me. Hopefully you learned something. Uh, I'm going to share some links in the Discord. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'm always happy to to share knowledge. I think the community is better when we uh, share this stuff. So thank you very much. I will catch y'all later.